The episode Band Geeks is the most iconic episode from Spongebob. This is one of the only episodes where we get to see the entire cast, Plankton's not doing anything evil, and we get introduced to Squidward's rival Squilliam. But among all, what was surprising to me was the amount of mistakes and errors within the episode. And that's what we're gonna cover today. You took my one chance at happiness and crushed it. Now, if you prefer to watch these videos in Spanish, I made a Spanish channel that I will link in the description. I'm gonna start uploading a bunch of videos on there with the help of my brother. So if you'd prefer to watch these videos in Spanish, make sure to check out that channel. Or maybe your mom only speaks Spanish and likes Spongebob. I don't know, bro. Anyways, Van Geek starts with Squidward playing his clarinet when he gets interrupted and then ends up in a phone call with his arch nemesis. Squilliam asks Squidward to play the bubble bowl since he's unable to do so. The only problem is, is that Squidward doesn't have a band, but lies to Squilliam in order to prevent him from being humiliated. This leads to Squidward posting flyers throughout Bikini Bottom in search of bandmates for his marching band. It just so happens that I don't sell fast food. While creatures from all over Bikini Bottom have shown up to the audition, the fact is that most, if any, have any musical experience, something that Squidward is about to painfully find out. This leads to our first error in this episode. Throughout this scene, characters start switching places with one another. The best example of this happens when Squidward Squidward enters the room. You can clearly see Spongebob and Patrick sitting next to each other in the second row, and then Sandy and Mr. Krabs sitting next to each other in the front row. But tell me this, how does Patrick end up sitting next to Sandy, which leads to him kicking her and starting the fight? Also in this scene, some characters are holding their instruments, but then all of a sudden, they're not. Okay, for instance, Pearl's playing what looks like a giant saxophone, yet in this scene, she is not holding any instrument. Also, how did Pearl go from being placed in the fourth row to the first one? Squidward asked the crowd who has played an instrument before. That's when Plankton raises his hand while holding a triangle. He asks whether instruments of torture count as musical instruments. But here we find yet another mistake. When we take a closer look at Plankton, it is obvious that the bottom side of the triangle he is holding disappears for a frame. Now we all know how frame by frame animation works, but even in modern 2D animation, they often use digital tools that allow for different elements like characters, objects, and backgrounds to be animated on separate layers. That being said, if the triangle was on a different layer from Plankton, an error could have occurred where the layer with the bottom part of the triangle was accidentally hidden or deleted for a frame. Now, this other mistake is something I noticed from the years of high school band. So basically, when Squidward asked the band to try to repeat after him, he points to the brass section to play. Now, to all the band nerds out there, you might have noticed that Pearl is playing this giant saxophone. This might not look out of the ordinary, except the fact that a saxophone is a woodwind instrument rather than a brass instrument. Also, the guy behind Pearl, who is clearly holding a trumpet, which is a brass instrument, doesn't even play it. Keeping up with this musical failure, when Squidward tells the woodwind section to play, one of the players is playing a brass instrument. Like yeah, I know it might seem I'm getting too technical with the classifications of the instruments, but as a former band member myself, these were some errors that I noticed right away. Now don't get me wrong, I know Steven Hillenberg is a marine biologist, not a musician. Not only that, many aspects of animation production, including writing, storyboarding, and animating, are often outsourced by other teams in different countries overseas. That being said, these teams specialize in animation not necessarily in the subject matter being animated, like freaking brass and woodwind instrument in this case. But when we go back to this scene when Squidward asked the drum section to follow him, the whole section is in the front row. But if we look at the beginning of practice, they were in the second row. Then when the band is marching in day two, you can clearly see some have switched instruments. Most notably, Evelyn is now seen playing a flute-like instrument instead of the snare drum she was before. Also, I don't know if this is like a big mistake, but when the band is shown turning from above, Pearl's nose is unreasonably big and just covers everybody. Again, I don't I don't know if this is a mistake or if this is how Pearl really looks from above. Now during day 3 of rehearsals, a frustrated Squidward asks Plankton how the harmonica solo is coming, to which Plankton replies that it is tremendous and proceeds to play the solo for Squidward. Here's the thing, you can see that Plankton is sitting down all by himself during this interaction. Yet a moment later, the harmonica magically appears on top of the chair without any notice. As Plankton plays his work in progress harmonica solo, he is so small that he has to run back and forth 
along the harmonica to get to the right areas, which exhausts him. But in the later scene where he shouts correct in response to Squidward's theory, he's as tall as Sandy's boot, which I'm not gonna lie, would make him the perfect height to play the harmonica. During the same scene, Squid is giving everyone the speech of playing loud to sound good. Here, there's a cut where it is shown everyone playing their instruments. Yet, most of these have shifted from the days prior. First, Mr. Krabs is not playing the accordion anymore. Pearl is playing a drum instead of her giant saxophone. And finally, Mrs. Puff is seen playing the cymbals instead of the initial wind instrument she was playing. Now, one could argue that maybe everyone was just trying to find their place in the band, you know, trying out different instruments. Maybe. But what I do know is that this next mistake is kind of weird, like to the point where I don't know how they can mess this up. Actually, before I show you, let me tell you about model sheets. So model sheets are like the ultimate reference guide for animators. Think about them as the character's ID card that lists all their features, how wide their eyes are, the exact color of their pants, the weird little quirks like how many teeth they have when they grin. It's basically a blueprint for consistency. So for SpongeBob, for example, there's a model sheet for how his square pants should look from every angle, how tall he stands next to Patrick and the specific shade of yellow that makes him, well, Spongebob. Now that you know that, when Squidward's scolding the band for not doing better, for most of this scene, Evelyn, whose skin is pink, is shown with a green skin instead. Also, in the same scene, Pearl is missing her iconic P on her shirt. Then, when Spongebob is giving the speech about Squidward being a fireman, Pearl is missing part of her skirt. You can't see her full skirt in the scene right afterwards though, but remember earlier when I talked about modern 2D animating? Well, in traditional 2D animation, like the ones used in this episode, it involves creating individual drawings from each frame of the animation. This episode likely used hundreds, if not thousands of frames. So an animator might have simply missed or overlooked Pearl's shirt in one of these frames, leading to its disappearance. Now towards the end of the episode, when the glass dome containing the band originally rises to the field, it is seen to be approximately 10 yards in diameter and positioned just off the center of the field. But then in later shots from within the dome, looking outwards, show an entirely different perspective with many more white lines than would be expected. Then during the band performance of Sweet Victory when the main cast is shown, Mr. Krabs is playing a purple guitar. But then during the panning, the guitar is green. Also, I just want to point out, could this V-shaped guitar that Sandy is playing be the same guitar people mistake SpongeBob for playing in the movie? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a whole Mandela Effect video. I'll leave a link in the description if you haven't seen it. But now let me introduce you guys to the final error I'm going to point out. And it's actually my favorite because I'm pretty sure this one went unnoticed by most people. This one actually goes back to when Patrick and Sandy fight. When Patrick opens his mouth while talking with a trombone in it, it actually makes a trombone noise. The slider goes downwards and it makes Patrick's voice go from a high pitched noise to a lower pitched noise. But this is completely wrong because if the slider went down, then Patrick should have actually made a higher pitched noise, not a lower pitched noise. But I get it, I get it. This is just a kid's show. <laughs> Day two. Honestly, this doesn't remove the fact that this episode is my favorite episode from Spongebob. But anyways, with that being said, don't forget that if you do prefer to watch these videos in Spanish, I made a whole Spanish channel and that link will be in the description. <laughs>